Hey, everybody. Karen Bryant for MA Heat. I'm here with Cynthia Calvillo, of course, a UFC strawweight uh, in town in L.A. We're here at Dynamics MMA. Our friend Anthony Hardonks, Jim here. And uh, so what brings you to town? Uh, just having a few meetings out here, business meetings, um, and just, you know, spending the weekend out here. Um, but that's it, checking out LA, having a good time. Very cool. Well, there's a lot I want to talk to you about, but I guess first and foremost, um, we should talk about when you can actually return to action. If you guys don't remember, Cynthia fought four times in 2017, won three out of them, uh, lost the last one, but afterwards you tested positive for marijuana metabolites, right? So they gave you a suspension. How long is that? When are you eligible again? Um, well, the Nevada State Commission and enemy suspended me for nine months, so I'm not. Bullcrap. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, was that allowed? <laughs> uh, tell me about it. <laughs> uh, I'm not eligible to fight until October 1st uh, this year, so it's you know still a couple months, about less than five months, but you know I'll be ready when it's time to get back. And so, what what do you think was the most frustrating part about that? Just the fact that they consider um, that to be a, a, a banned substance and a performance uh, enhancer, or the fact that um, the way the testing went, it it, it was just kind of screwy for you. I think both. I mean, the fact that it's even on the banned list, you know, because there's a lot of other things out there that are not on the list that yeah. you're allowed to use, which is pretty insane. Um, and then also just uh, the length of the suspension. Um, you know, USADA was, you know, they gave me six months and then was uh, giving me the, the chance to reduce that time by half to three months. I would have been eligible to fight in April already. But uh, the Nevada State Commission wanted to give me nine months and give other athletes who actually use, uh, you know, performance enhancement drugs and give them le way lesser time. So I just think it's a whole lot of, um, you know, bull crap for sure. Um, and then also just the way of the testing is that it's very inaccurate, you know, to really show whether, you know, you were using THC in competition, which I was definitely not using in competition. But for whatever reason, you know, my weight cut, my rehydration process uh, caused my levels to pop up high for THC. And, um, you know, so now I'm sitting here. I was actually pretty surprised, like yeah, really, really surprised. The, the very same day I had my, my contract for my next fight, it was the, the same day that Dana White called me and he was like, hey, honey, like, you tested positive, like, I'm sorry, but your fight's off. And I'm just like, ah. Uh. So it, it's, you know, really crappy, but I, and I just got to deal with it. There's not really much I can do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to bother trying to fight it. By the time, you know, anything happens, it's going to be time for me to fight. So I'm more focused on, you know, just getting back and being even way better than I was last year. So... I feel bad for whoever my next opponent is. <laughs> well, yeah, that does give you a lot of time to just get better if you had any nagging injuries. Obviously, you can heal up. Um, but, and I don't want to talk about this all day, but wh why do you think they even consider it a performance enhancer? <laughs> I mean, I think it's just uh, some people, maybe people that haven't used uh, cannabis and some people that have, some people, it just depends. I feel like there's anything you can use, you can, you can abuse. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. So, um, it's just some people think it's like a pain, you know, killer or, you know, it, it helps to relieve pain and, and stuff like that. But it doesn't. It doesn't enhance your performance. I like. I would never fight you like while I'm high. I'm just not. It's not gonna help me, you know, at all whatsoever. It's probably gonna help my opponent because I'll be a lot slower and easier to punch. So um, I might be able to take a punch better, which is not what I want to do. I don't want to get hit. So uh, my reaction would definitely be a lot slower. I don't. I don't see why it's even on there at all whatsoever. Yeah, it's. Uh, it is a mystery, and hopefully the rules about that will change. But let's talk about the fights. Like I said, you. You. you came in hot you know three wins in a row and they they were the first two were only about a month apart from each other right and then you had a couple months off um so in hindsight i mean is that the way you would have wanted to come in fast and furious like that or would you have preferred to spread them out a little bit um you know honestly it was i was just taking fight for fight and you know luckily when i heard my i had my ufc debut you know it was a really fast when i you know got a uh, first round finish so i wasn't injured i wasn't hurt so when i got the call to you know fight on the next pay-per-view i was like why not let's do it so it's you know for me i take fight for fight if i'm good and i'm healthy i you know i, I love competing so if i'm ready at that time that they offer me the fight I, I will definitely take it. So, you know, if I could do that next year, I, you know, I would. Of course, I, I also want to be smart about it and allow my body to heal up because, you know, you, you don't want to be doing just like weight cuts and being have that fight or fight mentality and fight camp and being all stressed out, you know. It's 
kind of hard for a girl, but, yeah. uh, you know, I just, like, was crazy all last year. <laughs> but, um, no, you know, I, I love fighting. I love competing. Yeah. Like, right now, seriously, this is, like, the most difficult time for me. It's, like, they took what I love, and that's that's fighting. Okay. Uh, um, but I'm still training all the time. I'm still tra- I mean, I still train just as hard. I probably train harder on off-season than some fighters mm-hmm. do in fight camp. So, um, you know, I'm just – I it, it's a little tough, but I'm I'm – I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to, you know, just trying to stay positive and stuff. You know, I still have my job, and I have no doubt that when I get back, I'm going to climb up those ranks again. Well, it was a really good fight with Carla. Um, she's a very good wrestler, obviously. Um, you know that better than I do, right? Because <laughs> you've actually been in there with her. But when you look at the division right now, um, who who do you think would be a good opponent for you? I know there's a lot going on, and by the time you do fight in October, you know, the, the, the rankings and things could be a little bit different, but are there a few people on your hit list that you'd love to match up with? Uh, yeah, everybody on the roster. I would love to fight everybody every single straw weight and then after that I you know I would love to move up to 125s because I've, I've fought at 25 is when I actually made my professional debut um, but you know I'm excited I like it's I, I, I look at every girl in there and, and you know I have a lot of respect for all of them like stylistically and, and they're all different and they all have their strengths and I'm excited to see how I match up against them like I, I'm, I'm open and, and ready to fight any of them when I get back. Well you came in with some really fast finishes and uh, somebody else, well, the USC welcomed somebody new the other day, Mackenzie Dern and there was a lot going on with her. She did not make weight. She missed by more than seven pounds. Uh, ABC still took the fight and afterwards Mackenzie got in the rankings and people like Angela Hill are not in there and they've committed themselves to the division longer won more fights in the division made weight all of that look at her face <laughs> okay <laughs> so what do you think about that Cynthia Calvi uh, you know r- you know rankings obviously uh, it, I really don't think they, they mean anything I think the most important that you should focus as a fighter is just winning your fights and as long as you win fights they're not going to deny you that title shot so whether you got a fight and you lose a fight and you take two steps back then you got to move up one then go ahead you know it is what it is I really think that it was a pretty professional I mean she's had seven fights and out of those seven fights she's only made weight three times which is freaking crazy you know what I mean like very very unprofessional I feel like how are you going to show up to Brazil knowing you're going to like probably do what weight or water retention yeah. flying over to Brazil overseas and show up late and at that at a almost 140 pounds and then you weigh in at 123 man you just just move up like what's what's the deal like it's why do you need a fight at 116 you know and I hope that you know she fixes and if the you know UFC helps her out and she go she does what she needs to do you know good on her but like I hope she doesn't miss weight again and but mm-hmm. you know it's it's crazy. Like I, you know, they tell me to fight her. Like, please prove to me that she can make this weight again, or otherwise I'll fight her at 125s. I have no problem doing that. Yeah, I mean that's I think part of what was upsetting to a lot of the other fighters was that they felt that she got special treatment in that situation. You know, it is it is what it is. You know, it's all about the money, and if you can sell it, they're gonna you know they're gonna put you on. And um, you know, she's she's marketable, and she's got a lot of Zanara. She has a big fan base, and um, people want to watch her. So, of course, you know. Some fighters just get treated differently. I mean, they thought the same thing about me too. But, you know, I fought I fought these fighters. I got these finishes. I made the weight. I showed up on time, you know, and I fought ranked fighters. You know, I fought Joanne Calderwood, who was ranked in order for me to be on the rankings. Uh, Mackenzie Dern, she didn't fight anybody those uh, in the top 15 ranked, and she still ended up on the rankings. So, obviously, that doesn't really make sense. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you can't really sit there and complain. You got to, you know have a large following have people love you make people want to watch you if people want to watch you then they're going to put you on because they need you to make money for them you know and so win your fights and you know they can't deny you like and that's you know that's what i say about me i'm going to keep winning these fights i don't care what anybody says what are you going to do? I keep winning these fights. You can't deny me. I'm going to get I get that title shot. You yeah, know, absolutely. And the thing about it is is um you know, you you just mentioned it. Some people were complaining about you. Yeah. Same thing. Hey, how come she gets three fights in a row? How come she gets four fights in one year? And, you know, a lot of people are, were, were waiting around. So did you feel that kind of pushback or did you feel that vibe from other fighters? I did. I didn't. But at the same time, uh, like I didn't. 
I didn't really care just because I, I know how tough I am and, and I don't care. Call me out. I want to fight you. Sure, I'll fight you. I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Am I going to push away these opportunities? Be like, well, this is not fair to the rest of the fighters, so I'm not going to take this fight. I think they should. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm here to fight. I want to fight whoever. I don't care if you're number 20 or number ranked number two. I don't care. I just want to fight you and I want to wake my way up to, you know, a title shot. So. You know, it is what it is. Well, I have to ask because, you know, we've talked about your story uh, when I do UFC now, um, how you were at Cheesecake Factory, right? And you said, if I don't make it to the UFC by a certain amount of time, is that all? That's all true, right? You gave yourself a date. If I don't make it by the U to the UFC, by then I'm going to quit. And, and then everything actually fell to place? Yeah, no, I was, uh, well, I told my mom, like, I was like, hey, uh, if I don't get into the UFC by the time I'm 30, then uh, um, I won't, I'll stop fighting. You know, I'm not even going to try anymore. And, um, I made it into the UC like three months, four months before. <laughs> four months. Yeah, and uh, you know, so it was, it was pretty cool. It was, it was, uh it was on Valentine's Day when uh, Sean Shelby DM'd me, and I was like, what? Sean Shelby, my DM's on my way to work. Sliding into those yeah. DMs. <laughs> no, so Sean, you little snake. I, I, was like, uh, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, the girl's hard. Just yeah, giving yeah, her an yeah. opportunity to fight you. Sure. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, no, so it was, it was pretty crazy. I, I was on my way to work, and I, I, you know, I was just like, got the message, and he's like, hey, do you want to take this last minute fight mm -hmm. with Amanda uh, Cooper? And I was like, uh, yes, you know, and he's like, okay, I'll let you know whether it happens. There's a few options. We'll see, you know, who, you know, right. what fight she'll take. And I was like, all right. And like, I was just so excited. I ended up like went the wrong way. I went to the gym <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, I'm late to work. You're in your white yeah, Craig outfit. No, I was in my so work fun. outfit and I was like, oh crap. Okay. So I got late to work and, but I couldn't like really like tell everybody to F off yet. Cause I didn't like have the fight, you know, I have right. no contract. It was a maybe, but the whole day, I mean, it was Valentine's day. Super busy, just miserable. You can't take that day off, right. pack like. And I was like, the whole time I was just like biting my tongue because you get all these crazy girls in there with their boyfriends, they're yeah, all bit up. Course, and like, yeah, the cheesecake factory, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> and so by the end of my shift, uh, uh, he sent me another message. He's like, the fight is yours, and I was like, yes. Wow. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was. As, as probably like yeah, one of the best days of my life for sure last year. That is so. I have a boyfriend, but I got a UFC fight. <laughs> <laughs> Even better, um, which which is great. But you know, you, you you mentioned it before that you could possibly move up to 25. Um, is it is uh, is it really hard for you to make 15? And and you know, how long do you think you could stay there um, versus moving up? Um, yeah, it is it is a, a tough weight cut. Like the 125s is pretty easy for me to do. Um, not not hard. Um, and one at 115, I can just like barely make it. It's it's doable. It's just tough weight cut. Um, I'm hoping that eventually everybody just starts moving up a little bit better. I know that like in other uh, promotions and stuff, they started, you know, making the fighters fight closer to the walking around weight and stuff, and having the hydrations mm -hmm. tests and and making sure that these fighters are the weight properly because there is a lot of times where people don't know how to cut weight right. properly and you know you know it's like the same thing even for like Mackenzie Dern like it's unfortunate like what are you doing to your body to, to do that if you're not you know you shouldn't be walking around at 140 pounds I don't know I don't know what you started your fight camp at like if you are gonna show up on fight week out of 140 and have to weigh in at 116 like that's not it's not healthy to do that right. especially as a, as a woman like a lot of like I feel like for the most like if anything and you know, anything from like seven to like 14 pounds, like, you know, I've, I've cut like about 15 to 17 pounds Jeez. in a week. And she was supposed to cut more. I mean, think about that from yeah. like 140 to <laughs> what the heck? Wow. How, that's the, I, yeah. an, an unthinkable, like imaginable. And so, um, I'm hoping that, you know, I'm going to, you know, I feel like I'm going to stay at the straw, in the strawweight division. I definitely want to fight everybody and, and, you know, I want to get that belt and I want to move up and be a two-time division champ, you know. I just want to break records and, and, you know, I want to build my legacy. Like, I want to be considered one of the best fighters in the world, you know. So, um, anything and all the opportunities, strawweight, going up to flyweight. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, you're, you're definitely on your way. And do you, um, do you think Rose will be at the top for a while? Um... um She's a very dominant fighter. I think that uh, she will be for a little bit, but I think it's also going to change. Um, there's a lot of girls that are coming up that are pretty good. You know, you have Tatiana Suarez, who's undefeated. She's going to be fighting soon. And uh, um, also, you know, Mackenzie Dern, you know, if they can make her up there. And there's there's a lot of new girls and a lot of, you know, shaking up the division and stuff, you know, including myself. So um, we'll see. I, I, I 
think she's a, she's a great person overall, a great great champion, great fighter, and great person. And um, uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens. You know, cool. Cool. very nice. Well, awesome, Cynthia. I'm really glad to get to know you a little bit and. Uh, Really looking forward to you returning to action. I'm sure um, I'm not quite as frustrated as uh, you are. Um, but hopefully October, maybe that big November show in New York, hopefully we'll see you in action then. Yes, of course. Any fight, please. Please, as soon as they let me go, October 1st, I'm ready. Let her bang, bro. <laughs> yes, let me bang, bro. Just let me bang. <laughs> Thanks, Cynthia. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, I'm Cynthia Calvillo, and you're watching MMA Heat. Yeah. <laughs>